Right, so good afternoon everyone. It's been a long time coming. My uh, first session of 2018 is uh, about to commence. Now I've got a quick afternoon off work, so I reckon around I've got around four hours to uh, see if I can go and nick myself a fish. Now I, uh, I knew I had this afternoon already planned off, so the last three nights I've been popping down after work and just trickling a little bit of bait into a few different areas so fingers crossed they've been mooching around finding these little parcels of bait that I've been putting in there the last few nights and uh, yeah hopefully I can try and nick one but happy new year to you guys thanks to all of you joining in my live streams and stuff like that um, it's been great speaking to you all obviously they're going to continue um, throughout the year hopefully but uh, yeah here's to my first session of 2018 it's a glorious winter's day it's absolutely beautiful so uh, let's get this little bit of gear out of the car that I've packed and uh, see if we can go and nick ourselves a fish Put the sun beating down, which will be perfect for the uh, snaggy little areas that I've been baiting. Um, <clears throat> just over to what would be my left is a fallen tree that must have come down fairly recently because um, obviously that's come out. Uh, that's probably come down in that weather, that, that really strong wind, stuff like that that we've had recently. And um, a lot of natural food goes in that area in the way of bread and stuff like that. And I've been baiting that area, <clears throat> like I say, over the past few nights. There's also a lot of snaggy areas down to my right and um, a known spot where I always see them show directly out in front of me as well. So what I'm going to do first, I'm not going to get any rod sorted. I'm going to get my glasses on. I can see my gear for where I'm going to leave it because I can get access to all three spots from this swim. So what I'm going to do is get my glasses on first and just go out and look around, see if I can um, see anything with this sun being up so high. It's pretty flat calm. There's only a very, very slight breeze, but... Um, as far as I was aware, I thought it was meant to be 30 mile an hour gusts, southwesterly gusts, but that doesn't seem to be materialising at the moment. So, without further ado, I'm going to get these glasses on and uh, go and have a quick lap and uh, see if I can see anything. Right, so like any session really, obviously location is paramount to being able to catch fish. If you're not finding the fish, you're not going to catch them as quickly as you want to be catching them. Now, I'm just um, <clears throat> having a quicker look around. Obviously, I've got my Fortis glasses on, I've got a hat, and even if I need to block out any more light, I can pull my hood up as well. Like I say, that's paramount to being able to, you know, maybe get yourself a quick hit or a quick fish when you're on short sessions like this. So, these ones are, what, 20 quid? They're not the best ones in the range, and uh, these are absolutely perfect for what I need them for. <clears throat> now, um, I've been and had a look in a couple of the snaggy areas, can't actually see anything, but what I can see is that the water is quite clear, to be fair, which is, um, which I really didn't think it would be with the amount of rain and stuff like that we've, that we've had, but a good sort of six to eight foot. <clears throat> you can see how shallow it is in the margins. I'm definitely not going to be fishing tight um, into any margins because otherwise the ducks are going to like, harass me and just going to cause me all manner of problems. So what I'm going to do is probably fish to... Um, fish to this snaggy tree here but more on the tip of it rather than close in um like i say that's probably been down for a good month or so at least um well at least obviously since we've had that bad weather over the past few weeks so you know carper inquisitive they like to go and uh make haven and you know have a little safe house and stuff so that screams to me a rod definitely um there's a couple of little areas that i've also been baiting around the other side um of the lake which i'm just going to go and check out now but yeah well worth getting yourself a pair for 20 quid any hat will do anything um, and like I say you've got your hood on your on your hoodie if you need to block out that side light as well but yeah the water's quite quite clear at the moment I can't like I say I can't actually see anything in the snags itself but <clears throat> it's not to say they're not there and just down in that deeper water um, so let's go and have a look around the other side and see if we can see anything
I've so spent a good sort of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just walking back and forth on this bank and I've not actually seen a fish yet. Um, <clears throat> definitely not in the margins anyway. If they're out um, slightly in that little bit of deeper water, then yeah, I've not been able to see them. Apart from, like I say, seeing this marginal um, leave and debris and stuff like that, I can't really see much else. There is a bit of cloud cover now, which is making it a little bit harder to um, be able to see a lot, a lot more. But the only one thing I have seen <clears throat> is uh, just down in some snags here. I did see something break the surface. Now there weren't no ducks, no birds, nothing other than um, rings coming off the uh, edge of the margin. Now the wind's not hacking down this end, so it definitely sort of weren't wind disturbance or anything like that but it was um enough to make me think there may be one or two just getting around maybe underneath those snags it is a known area where the uh where the fish sort of hold up and do patrol so i think for my uh right hand rod i will be sort of leaning out and flicking it down this way it's a bit larry is gonna have to be sort of locked up and stuff like that because there are some uh branches and stuff like that so that's going to hopefully be a one cast jobby down there and leave that for at least the first couple of hours anyway um and i think to be honest with the uh <clears throat> the snag over in the um over in the water over there as well i think that's going to be my uh my second choice and my left hand rod so i think yeah this margin and just try and get one down here and then get one out over across to that tree as well like i said i've been baiting it quite a bit over the last few days so fingers crossed we might be able to nick ourselves a fish but uh yeah i've not seen anything but like i say that was more than enough to make me think this this corner warrants a rod so let's get back round to the gear and uh get these rods set up right so that's the first rod gone out as i mentioned the left hander was going over into that fallen tree area so that's gone out first time not as tight as i'd liked but <clears throat> worth an hour at least so time to get the second rod ready just wanted to talk you through um sort of how I've got it set up as always I just use the lead clip session pack from Corda so that involves using tubing which comes down to uh, the lead clip sleeve that just fits the obviously the tubing just slides nicely into that end and then the lead clip obviously just pushes into the uh, lead clip itself excuse the bit of line obviously you clip onto your lead what i'm using today is just a two ounce flat pair now that's more than enough to where i need to cast to it's a flat pair so when obviously as it goes down it's going to land flat flush against the lake bed it's not going to go diving in because it's not that heavy obviously these uh, casts are just light flicks so i don't need anything massive if anything it's just going to um <clears throat> dig into the silt and whatever else so two ounces more than enough for what i need and obviously again that just slips onto the uh lead clip as so now um on the end i've not just got your conventional swivel i've got the uh the quick link swivel so that allows me to hook on a fresh rig and uh obviously if i have a fish i can um <clears throat> say safely just unhook that uh hook link from the actual swivel itself and get the rod sorted and get it back out with a fresh rig so these are really handy and i always use them obviously this end once you've uh, hooked the ring of your uh, rig on it you can just slip the, the uh, anti-tangle sleeve over the um, swivel and then that stops obviously your rig from coming off and gives the uh, kick away anti-tangle properties of your rig so that's the rig um, that's the uh, terminal tackle end what i'll do now is go through the uh, the rig that i'm using for this session right then so on to the uh, business end the rig end now um, I'm just using a real basic pop-up rig now as I mentioned this little lake is like half an acre in size it's just sort of situated in the middle of some or on the edge of some woods now obviously it's tree lined throughout so you can only imagine the amount of choddiness silt leaves everything on the bottom of this lake um, you know it's gonna need something that's gonna be propped up and out the way of all that rubbish not impeding you know your hook hold or not getting caught on anything and snap on anything on the bottom you know limiting your chances of getting a pickup so I'm using a pop-up rig <clears throat> now this is so so easy to tie um, I think it was Daryl Daryl Peck uh, put this rig out on one of the master classes I think last year it was the Belgian one where he's basically just got a 20 pound quarter semi stiff with a shot a little break in the um, coating just to allow a little bit more free movement and then not less not tied down onto a uh, size 8 quarter wide gape now what i've got mounted on there is a uh, bait tech super fruit pop-up now these are 
high vis in colour, so obviously going to give ultimate attraction. I'm not putting any loose feed out today, only what's contained within the PVA bags that I'm nicking onto the hook point. Now, yeah, these are high vis really really fruity and obviously coupled with the uh, new PVA liquids that Bait Tech has sent me um, I'm hoping that obviously these little just these little parcels of bait are going to be doing enough for me to try and nick a bite but yeah this is the rig it's about six inches from uh, from shot to the end of the uh, loop and then that's propped up about an inch or so so enough to be out the way of any debris and stuff like that but um, <clears throat> enough length on the rig to stay clear of when the lead's just landing on the bottom that'll just slowly flutter down and that'll just prop up right it's a real basic basic rig it's just like a simplified hinge stiff rig without as many components and um i've used it in the past and i've had a few fish on it and i just think for this session sort of, uh, short session fishing this is absolutely perfect for what i need nothing too complicated and i can just get it out there and flick it out and like i say i've tied up a few of these ahead of my session as well so they're all in the rig safe ready to go on the uh, lucky chance I managed to nick a fish or two today so this one's the white one that's that's the one going down in the right hand corner like I say a little PVA bag of uh, the new blood worm pellet some uh, berry glug giving that a good dose of that and uh, yeah we'll give it an hour or so and then we'll re-evaluate re but um, let's get this one out and see if we can nick ourselves a fish Right then, so a real quick update for you. It's just coming up to about three o'clock and uh, nothing's materialized as of yet. I've been watching the water like a hawk. You can see I've got my hood up as well. It's turned a bit fresh. That sun has disappeared. It's now just become sort of overcast and grey. We have had a little bit of drizzle as well, which um, wasn't on the weather report that I've been looking at this morning. It was meant to be pretty much uh, blue skies throughout the day. Obviously, I knew it was going to be a bit more nippier than the last couple of days, but uh, yeah, it's turned overcast and grey, and um, I'm hoping that that rain just stays stays away for the last couple of hours, really. But in the meantime, like I say, I've been watching the water like a hawk, and I've not seen anything yet. But in the sort of main bulk of this. Uh, it's just sort of like the middle area of the of the lake as such i've just seen the odd little um odd little bubble here and there and sort of uh i did 50 50 i'm not 100 percent sure see sort of uh one set of rings as well and there weren't no ducks around at that point in time but there was a bit of a chop on the water so i think what i'm going to do is um keep my left hander going over to that tree i'm going to recast both rods within the next sort of 15 minutes get that left hander a little tighter to that tree so i wasn't 100 percent happy with that first cast but it was close enough to give it an hour i didn't want to cause too much disturbance so i'm going to get that rod over to that tree um clip it up and add a bit onto that one get that over there so that's sorted then what we're going to do is move that right hander i think and put it in the main bulk of the water just because that's the area that i've seen you know any sort of activity just from them few bubbles now it might be fish it might not be but i've not seen anything else apart from obviously that um bit of disturbance down that end and nothing's happened yet from that so i think yeah i'm going to dump it in there it's probably a little bit deeper in that middle i can imagine it just to be a very shallow sort of bowly area so let's stick one out like i say over to the tree get one hand out into the middle of that water uh, give that an hour or so and they may maybe give it one last recast for um <clears throat> the last hour or so and see what happens going into sort of like the witching hour on dark so uh that's a plan of attack anyway so um let's give it 10 10 15 minutes and then uh, whip these rods in Right then, so it's around 20 past four now, probably got less than an hour of light, but whilst I've just been stood up watching the water, I've noticed probably just a single figure fish has um, rolled and caused some uh, disturbance on the surface down here. Now, I don't want to bring in that left one off the, uh, off the tree line, so I've brought in my right hand rod that was open water 
and just um, walked it down the bank sort of 10-15 yards and just underarmed the pop-up out exactly where I've seen it. I've just uh, tore open a couple of those PVA bags and also just given that a little sprinkle of that bloodworm pellet. So if there are one or two just down in this corner, then um, that pop-up is going to be in prime position if they uh, if they are down there. I'd be silly not to um, try and nick a bite in sort of like the last half hour, 45 minutes, because not nothing else has really been happening at all. And I wasn't expecting them to see them, see anything down in this corner either because that cold wind is pushing in down this corner and it has been all day and it's not the warmest. We've even got the gloves on, it's turned that cold. But, um, you know, carp, they go where they want, they've got fins and, and if there's water they'll swim in it. So, who knows, but uh, yeah, I'm going to think I'm going to sit it out in this corner. I've got the other rod, like I say, just up on the alarm up there. So if that one does go, then I can get up on it in a flash. It's only 10, 15 yards away. But for now, I'm going to just sit on this rod. I'll just turn the camera on a bit. Sit on this rod. And just hope that that fish comes back into this corner. It was literally like here. Couldn't believe my eyes, to be honest. Didn't see the fish, but I see the... Um, see the aftermath and the big and the big waves afterwards but yeah literally just just here so I've underarmed my rod out literally down there with the same same pop-up on and just giving it a real light sprinkle of uh, of that bloodworm pellet so if they do come in them tiny little pellets are going to be leaking attraction straight away and hopefully they'll get back in and obviously that high visual pop-up is going to be there it's just going to be in their face and hopefully that's enough just to nick myself a bite but uh, yeah fingers crossed obviously if anything does happen in between then and now I'll get this camera straight back on but yeah let's try and see if we can uh, nick ourselves a fish before darkness falls So as you can see, all packed down now, just making my way back down to the car. And uh, yeah, unfortunately nothing come to uh, nothing come to that, that rod that I moved into the margin after seeing that fish roll and uh, sitting on it for a good 45 minutes. Nothing happened. Um, one lad did come and join me. He just sat himself down in one of the opposite corners to myself. Um, recognized me from my youtube videos so sorry mate i didn't quite catch your name but um it was nice to meet you and hopefully we can uh, bump into each other again sometime but uh yeah unfortunately nothing happened it's nice to get out for a good few hours though been out of touch really obviously after christmas and stuff like that and nothing you know nothing happening on the on the fishing front so it's nice to get out for a few hours and uh get some fresh air so i'll try and um keep you up to date on my next sessions on my uh, live stream so if you're about Tuesday evenings that's uh, over on my YouTube channel you can come and catch my live stream there um, next blog will probably be my Bramble Mia 48 hour session which is um, the first weekend of February but as always thanks for watching this short little video um, feel free to check out any of my others and obviously don't forget to uh, don't forget to subscribe as well, keep up to date with all my other videos and stuff like that. But um, but for now, yeah, thanks for watching. Drop me a message, don't forget to uh, like my page and come and have a little chat on my uh, Facebook page. I'm always happy to speak to you guys. So uh, yeah, until then, have a great week and um, I'll catch up with you guys soon.